Building a subwoofer enclosure for a truck can be a challenge. Due to the undersea area being small, we need to add angles to the box and we need rounded corners to match the seat. How can you build your own custom underseat subwoofer enclosure? In this video, we're gonna take a look. So check it out guys, this is the subwoofer enclosure we're going to be building. It's always a good idea to have a plan, of course, before we even start cutting our materials. Now I came up with this design in a past video, so if you guys wanna see all the details, I'd encourage you to go back and check that out. But what we have here is four 10 inch subwoofers down firing in a sealed enclosure. We've got bracing inside the enclosure to keep everything good and strong. We've got rounded corners to match the seat, and we have a notch in the front and in the back of the enclosure to allow that energy to come out from that bottom area. This one's gonna be fun to build. If you guys wanna get a blueprint design of your own to build your own custom subwoofer enclosure from, check out the links down in the video description. Now none of these pieces are just a simple rectangle but we're going to be cutting a bunch of simple rectangles to get things started here on the table saw. I've got my raw materials here 3 quarter inch MDF. Let's get started making our cuts. All right, so I've cut four boards so far. I've got the front, I've got the back, I've got the baffle that mounts the subwoofers, and then I've got the top. Now each of those pieces are going to require an angle to be cut on them. After all, the top of this enclosure has an angle. So when I cut each of these pieces, I made sure that I oversized them so that I can trim them to their final size with the angle on this next cut. To get our angle exact, we're gonna use one of these digital angle cubes. I'm gonna zero it out on the work surface there and stick it to the blade. And now I can adjust this angle until I get to my target of 13 degrees. There we go, perfect right there, we can lock it in. Here's a cool trick you should know if you wanna get true professional level accuracy. Once we've adjusted the angle of our blade, the distance from the edge of our fence to where the blade is actually going to cut the material is going to be slightly different than the value if it would be normally 90 degrees. So what you can do is make a test cut to see how much you need to adjust each of your measurements in order to get the final measurement that you desire. What you can do is you set your fence to a known value. In this case, I set it to eight inches and I made a test cut. I then measured that test cut and I found that rather than eight inches, my board was actually seven and 31 30 seconds inches. In other words, my measurement was off by a 30 second of an inch. So all I have to do is keep that adjustment value in mind when I'm making each of my cuts. As an example, this next board, I wanna cut at three and seven sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to add one thirty second to that. So seven sixteenths is actually 14 30 seconds. So I need to set this at three and 15 30 seconds. The more simple way to do the math would be to look for that three and seven sixteenths inch value and then just add a 30 second of an inch to it. So now I wanna get these side pieces of the enclosure made and these have a large angle cut that I need to make. So I started off of course with cutting out the rectangle for these first and I gave myself a little bit of extra material on this side here so that I could cut this angle. Now here's another awesome tip for you guys. I know a lot of people would think that you would wanna bust out the miter gauge here on the table saw in order to cut that angle, but you're always messing around with, you know, do I have enough clearance for this thing to sit on here and still reach over to the saw blade? Is this even accurate enough? It never seems to work out quite right where it perfectly cuts that line. So instead what we do is we take a board that we've cut to a known width. This value could be eight inches, 10 inches, 20 inches, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what the value is so that you can set your table saw fence to that value and as long as it's big enough to hold our piece on the board. Now we're gonna take a piece of double-sided template tape and we're gonna stick it to the piece that we need to cut and then we're gonna take our board of a known cut width and we're going to stick it to our piece. By doing this, we can now bring this assembly over to the table saw and I'm gonna hold this firmly while I make the cutting pass and as you can imagine, it's going to cut on that line absolutely perfectly giving us our angle. So here I've got my two side pieces and they perfectly match each other and they are perfectly cut. I'm going to use that same method when I go to make these braces on the inside of the enclosure. Again, because I wanna get that angle perfect, I'll do the same process. 
Now we're going to turn our attention to making these corners that add that rounded look to the box. Now you'll see that each of these corners have a little notch in them and that's so that once we have the vertical pieces like those side pieces they can come in and they can fit into that little notch as part of the corner. To make these corners I'm going to be using the quick corner templates from Mobile Solutions. In this case you can see that we're going with the 5 inch radius because that's what matches our seat. But if we were doing something different, there's also a three inch, four inch, that five inch of course, the six, seven, and eight inch options from those guys. To make our first one, we're gonna be using the template along with some template tape to stick it to a piece of wood, and then we're using a quarter inch flush trim bit here on the router to copy its profile. Once that's done, we'll continue the process in making the stack by using CA glue to stick each additional layer in place. So we will continue our box building in a second here, but I do want to take a quick second to tell you guys about Show Sponsor Audio Control and their LC series of subwoofer amplifiers. There are currently two different options in the line, the LC-1.800 and the LC-1.1500. This is the rated power in Watts RMS, and both of these amplifiers make their rated power at 2 ohms. What's special about these amplifiers, though, is they have a ton of different features that make them a great choice to add bass to your system. An example of one of those features is the proprietary AccuBase technology that Audio Control has built into their amps. What happens is if we are using an OEM source radio, when we turn up the volume, a lot of times the OEM makes it so that the bass level actually reduces, and they do that to protect their inexpensive stock speakers. But when we add an aftermarket amp and subwoofer and upgrade our speakers, we obviously don't want to do that anymore, and the AccuBase allows us to counter that roll-off. This makes sure that we have perfectly performing bass. To learn more about the LC series lineup, be sure to check out the link down in the video description. All right guys, so we've got our stacks here. Now I've actually made four of these and the reason is the baffle, which is the layer that actually has the cutouts for the subwoofers, that's going to be an additional layer that's going to have this same curved profile on it. So what I've done here is I'm going to have two layers before the baffle, then there's going to be the baffle layer, and then this will sit on top of the baffle layer. Along with having our stacks made, we now also have the rough dimensions cut for the sides, for the bracing on the inside, and for the rest of the pieces, so now we need to do all of our detail work. I'm going to start with doing all the detail work on the baffles. So we need to get our cutout holes added here, but the first thing I want to do is, if we think about it, we need to make an inset cut on the sides and on the front here that will allow that vertical board to be placed. So you saw me make these lines perfectly straight by using those straight templates on the router. And that's so that I have a nice clean reference point to start making my dimensions for all of the cutout holes. Now the reason I haven't cleaned up the corners yet is I don't want to do that until I permanently attach these stacked pieces to the baffle. So on those straight cuts I made sure that I came close enough that I would start to land on where these quick corners start. But I don't want to attach the quick corners quite yet because they're going to get in the way while I make each of the cutout holes. So now I'm going to start marking out the center point of each of these dimensions and making those. All right, so we now have all four of the subwoofer holes cut out. Something I do want to do to these cutouts is I just want to knock down the inside edge a little bit on the router. 
I'm just going to use this really small round over bit just to soften up that edge. So I've added that round over there and honestly it's barely noticeable but it will just help prevent this wood from splintering if we accidentally bump it when we put the subwoofer in and it does give it a much more finished feel. Just to give you a look at what it actually does, this area here does not have the round over cut. I started the cut right about here. It's essentially just sanding that edge, but we can do it very quickly. Now that we've done all of our detail work on the baffle, we can permanently attach our quick corners and we can flush trim those to match the baffle. So now that all the detail work is done on the baffle, I did a dry fit of the front piece here and we do need to do a little bit of detail work on the front. Don't forget that I wanna have a little notch cut out here on the front. That's going to allow the energy from the subwoofers to transfer forward, so we need to make that cut next. There we go guys, now we have our nice cutout on the front of the enclosure. Now we still have some more detail work to do on the braces, but I wanna get some assembly work done here first. The assembly process is nothing crazy. We just take some wood glue and we're going to apply it to all of the mating surfaces and we make sure that we spread it out so that the surface is completely coated. Once we've done that, we assemble the pieces and then we use a brad nailer to nail the pieces together so that it can hold together while the glue dries and adds the strength. So I've added the rest of our stack here. I've added the side pieces along with the front piece. Now this is where the magic starts to come into play because we need to add an angle cut to this stacked part. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this and I've shown other ways to do this before on the channel, but this is a different way that you can do using a negative cutout of our shape. Now the process to make this angle cut is a little bit more involved with quite a few steps and I really wanted to go into detail for you guys so I'm going to cover that in the separate next video. So we've got those angles added, I've also in the meantime added the back side of the enclosure but now we need to make these braces. So let's check that out. So I've made three of these braces because they're going to be going in this area between the subwoofers and right now they have kind of a hard edge on the inside. I want to soften that up by taking it over to the router and using this roundover bit. There we go, these now have a much more finished look. Let's get these added into the box. And here we have it guys, the bracing added inside the enclosure, fully mounted and glued in. Now you may have noticed as I went through the assembly process, I made sure that I ran a bead of glue into every single corner. And once I attach the top of the enclosure, I'll be able to reach in and do these corners through the subwoofer holes. I am going to hold off on mounting the top of the subwoofer enclosure for now, but in the next video we need to start adding all of our beauty panel and detail work to the front and sides of the box. So we definitely have a video coming up for doing the beauty panels and we also have a video coming up next for how we made that angle cut on those stacked corners. That's coming up very soon, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to check it out. Next time you need a subwoofer amplifier for your system, definitely check out show sponsor Audio Control with their LC series of amplifiers. To learn more, there are links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank Thank you guys for tuning in and watching.